subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Gentlemen, you've made this incredible documentary about the scientific and cultural significance of meteorites, shooting stars and deep impacts. You know, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did because I didn't realize it was going to be about so much more. Um, by the end of it, I was just in complete awe of the possibility that these hundreds and thousands year old meteorites could hold the answer to that eternal question of where did we come from um, and how and where did, uh, did life on earth begin? Um, were, were you aware, to both of you, were you aware of these theories starting out on this film, when you were starting out on this film, the, the connection really between, the possible connection between humankind, humanity, if you like, and geoscience and cosmology? Well, uh, Clive Oppenheimer uh, came to me. We did a film before on, on uh, volcanoes. And it was immediately clear, this kind of excitement that you feel, I immediately felt, and I said, yes, let's do the film. Five seconds and I was, I was in it. But of course, Clive did all the research and he did the casting of characters he has. He has done all the preliminary work. Yes, we, we, was, we were aware of this, uh, you know, the, there are meteorites that have a lot of organic molecules. These, mm. these are not biological abiotic but they're organic molecules like amino acids a protein has been found uh sugars uh but to to really th think about that i found that astonishing as a geologist uh, i can't really comprehend i know what inorganic minerals are but i can't really comprehend how abiotically you make something as complex as an, as a, an amino acid uh and so i found it very compelling this this idea which um, which partly links to an old idea of panspermia. Even in the 19th century, scientists were speculating that, uh, uh, that life is elsewhere in the universe and, and that it, it finds um, habitable places, favorable environments where it can take hold. Uh, the idea that, that the building blocks of life might be delivered by comets and meteorites and find the right kind of environment, then to make that leap from chemistry to biology, I find compelling. Um, the this, other thing, though, that I wasn't... This is why you wanted to, this really wanted to go to India, to the crater Ramgar crater right. in Rajasthan, together with an Indian wonderful uh, scientist. I think she, she works in the United States, but she's of Indian, of Indian heritage. Right. And you're in, the, in a crater in, in a crater, India. and those temples in the crater, yeah. Yes, a, a temple dedicated to Shiva. I mean, it, just, right. it doesn't it doesn't get better uh, in in this uh, wonderful. That was actually one of the most um, extraordinary places that, that we visited for me, for me on on this uh, project. Uh, very very mysterious um, with the temples and and, and Nitha Sahai mm. uh, is is an expert exactly on this this field of how chemistry might become biology. But you, you know, another thing that I, I wasn't prepared for, even knowing this stuff about the organic molecules, is that you can smell them. You yeah. can smell them on these stones. And in, in Arizona, we, we were shown a, a recent fall from Costa Rica. And the, the meteoritist said, go and have a smell. And I smelt this thing. And it, it's uh, very, very pungent. These are molecules wow. from four and a half billion years ago. It, Smells a bit like the inside of a vacuum cleaner bag or an ashtray. Ah. Very, very unusual. You know, there are moments in this film that are just magical in the way that they reveal the joy of discovery, the love of the love for science. Um, there's that bit where the South Korean researchers arrive in Antarctica, and that's just such a beautiful moment. Or, or even the data research scientist who's been working at that observatory in Maui, and, and the first time that he goes up to see the telescope is with you, uh, uh, Clive. Um, these are moments you can't script, right? These are moments that just, this is what, this is what, um, this is the magic of, of films, isn't it? Yeah, it was always clear, we have to, we should not be didactic. This is not a school class. We have to follow the sense of awe, the sense of excitement. Uh, the, and, and when you see the film, you sense the joy of filmmaking mm. and you sense the joy of science. That has to come across. And Clive is a wonderful, wonderful character on camera yeah. who, who uh, can really make it visible and he can make people talk 
and get this excitement to the audience? The, the idea for, for making the film actually stemmed from a visit to the Korean Polar Research Institute, and it, it was seeing some of the specimens that they'd already found, yeah. uh, beautifully curated, very, very exotic, very extraordinary rocks, and, and speaking with the, the specialist there. Uh, and Jong Ik Lee, uh, who then invited us to, to join them on the annual search. Uh, he's, he, we see him in this film and he finds this very large stone on, on the blue ice on the polar plateau in Antarctica and, and is, it just falls over and is in floods of tears. And I, I would be the same. I can totally understand that as, as you a did, geologist. You did, you did discover two meteorites um, on ice, uh, on camera, in fact, didn't you? It was not staged. Right. <laughs> we really found it. That's right. And P Peter uh, Zeitlinger was at, even up in the air at the time, um, filming the, the beautiful aerials. It's, you know, going out to this location, I, I wasn't sure this was going to look cinematic. I just knew mm. that it was incredibly flat and high and windy um, and a lot of ice. And I, I was not prepared for how uh, breathtaking that, that ice scape is, the, the quality of light as it's reflect, refracted in, in the, this ancient glacial uh, blue ice um, and snow snakes. The wind is blowing all the time and there are these snow snakes slithering at your feet. And we, we walked downwind and um, fanned out in a line and uh, I, could see, I could see the Koreans uh, 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 stepping down. They, they were finding stones and I wasn't finding anything for for several hours. So I was very thrilled and very relieved to find a stone. You know, another thing that I think is especially resonant, particularly in the times that we're in today, is that that sense that life and the world as we know it could be over in a flash. You know, listening to those scientists in the observatory in Hawaii talking about how they're monitoring the asteroids that are coming towards Earth 365 days a year, or that NASA uh, astronaut who's talking about um, the size of the asteroids and the meteorite, meteorites. Um, how did this film make you feel about, about death to both of you? It, it didn't change. I don't think it changed the way I, I felt about death, but I, I, I certainly, uh, I find it very fascinating that um, how, how other people feel about death. Uh, so for instance, on Mer Island mm. uh, in the Torres Strait, between um, Queensland and Papua New Guinea. Uh, we filmed on this tiny island, just the size of a few football pitches, uh, population of 400. And they are, when they see a shooting star in the night sky, uh, it, it indicates someone's about to die or, or someone has de is deceased. Um, and the, the star, the shooting star is, is the, the soul departing. And um, this is the beginning of a journey. It's the beginning of a journey to the underworld, um, to, to the netherworld. Uh, death is not, it, it, it's, it's not a, an event. It's, it's, it's a stage. It's, it's a beginning of a journey. So when you start to look at these phenomena, uh, volcanoes, uh, shooting stars, meteorites, you, you start to uh, understand actually how we do grapple with uh, where do we come from? Where are we going? What happens when we die? Is there an afterlife? Mr. Herzog? Well, um, you spoke about the uh, warning systems that are in place in Hawaii and mm. at NASA. Um, what is kind of reassuring that we know that most of these asteroids and large objects are like, uh, like in, a, in, in a stadium where you have racetracks, parallel racetracks. So we are going for centuries and centuries and mathematically, you know, in 450 years from now, one of these bigger objects will be very, very close and there might be a collision. So, and, and we can do something about those. Uh, if you have a, a meteorite or a big object that comes from outside our, of our solar system, they will come quickly. They will come out of nowhere and within days we will be hit and destroyed if it's really big. But it may be um, hundreds of millions of years away from, from now. So you can, you, can sleep, uh, you can sleep well, I guess. Thank you so much. This is such an enlightening film and I'm so glad it's going to be out there for everyone to watch. Thank you so much. Thank you to both of you. Very kind of you. Thank you. Thank Good you. to talk to you. Thank you.